driving in a built-up area, we will often find obstacles in our path that we will need to steer around. This will usually involve driving on the other side of the road, but we must ensure that we do not obstruct oncoming traffic that is driving towards us. As we drive along this road, all the parked cars are on our side, so oncoming traffic will have priority, and we should give way to allow them to pass. We spot the silver van driving towards us, and as our lane is blocked, we must pull in. We check our mirrors and see the car is waiting safely behind us, so we drive on and return to our lane once more. This is called meeting traffic, and in this video we will show how to handle this situation safely by using good anticipation and planning skills. In a built-up area, we will often see parked cars, but we may also have to deal with other obstructions such as roadworks, traffic calming measures or even a skip. As a general rule, if the obstruction is on our side of the road, oncoming vehicles will have the priority and we must not do anything to make them change speed or direction. If the obstruction is on the other side of the road, we will normally have the priority, but we should still be prepared to slow down or stop as oncoming traffic could move out into our lane before they see us approaching. Sometimes there will be obstructions on both sides of the road, so there is no clear priority. If we spot this situation, then we need to be careful. We normally slow down a little as this will give us more time to decide how to proceed and reduce the chance of needing to stop suddenly. We should use the MSM routine to help us deal with any obstacles in our path as we will probably need to change our road position and our speed. A quick mirror check will allow us to see any following traffic and if we spot someone overtaking us we should delay our manoeuvre until they have passed. We should consider indicating right if we think someone will benefit, but usually our road position and speed will signal our intentions. Indicating right for every parked car should be avoided as it could mislead others that we are about to turn right into a side road or driveway. So as soon as we spot the black parked car, we check our mirrors and gently steer to the right as this will give us a better view ahead. We must drive slowly enough to allow us to come to a smooth stop if necessary, so we slow down a little here. As we pass the next few cars, we see there is oncoming traffic. They have the priority here, so we decide to stop behind the black car. We don't want to look like we are parking, so we position away from the curb and indicate right. When stopping, we aim to keep a reasonable clearance from the obstruction to help maintain a good view of the road ahead and allow more room for steering when we pull away. Next, we turn onto a wider road, and this gives us a little more space to use. Even though the obstruction is on our side of the road, there is enough room to keep going without making the oncoming traffic stop. We should try to keep a door's width gap between our car and the parked cars, as a careless driver might open their door as we pass them. For the next stretch, the cars are parked on the other side of the road, so we move over a little to allow the oncoming traffic more space. There is often a little give and take like this on wider roads, but we should still be ready to stop if there isn't enough room to continue safely. This next road in the town centre is even wider, but as the parked cars are on both sides of the road, there is not much room to pass oncoming traffic. We slow down and get a little closer to the cars on our left, but we must never risk scraping another car as it would cause a lot of damage. If we are in any doubt, we stop and wait. Another tight spot here, 
and we almost stop as we let the other car through. In double park streets there is often no priority and usually the first car to reach the narrow spot will go through first. There is a fine balance between making good progress and being too hasty. In this clip we are following a cyclist and we don't have enough room to overtake because of the oncoming traffic overtaking a parked car. We must give cyclists plenty of room when passing in case they move unpredictably. So here we need to be patient and wait until we have enough space to overtake safely. Once we have checked our mirrors for danger, we use plenty of engine power to overtake promptly and return to our side of the road. In this last video clip, we will be driving through a tricky residential area and there will be many parked cars on both sides of the road to deal with. We will need to check our mirrors for danger every time we need to change lanes around parked cars on our side of the road. But our change in road position is an effective signal to other traffic, so we don't need to indicate unless it will help others. We might need to stop for hazards such as a child running into the road or a careless driver, so we should keep our car speed fairly slow. We always look as far ahead as possible and here we spot the silver car driving towards us. They respect our priority and pull in a little to let us pass by. Since the bend limits how far we can see ahead, we drive carefully to reduce the chance of being forced to stop suddenly. Another mirror check before steering through the gap between the cars. We are especially careful here as the parked cars force us to drive on the other side of the road around the bend. Normally we try to avoid parking on bends for this reason, but in residential areas this can be hard to avoid. We see a really tight gap between the parked cars here, so we slow right down to make sure we don't scrape either car. As we look ahead here, we see the silver car waiting for us. Even though they have priority, they have waited next to a gap for us to use. If another driver flashes their lights in this situation, try not to rush anything as the lights might not be for us or have been flashed accidentally. This is why we don't recommend flashing other drivers unless we are warning them of our presence. Finally, we find the end of this road and we can return to a larger road that will have far less obstructions. So remember to look as far ahead as possible for obstructions, use the MSM routine on approach, stop and wait for oncoming traffic if needed and steer smoothly around the obstruction. If you found this video interesting then please click our logo to subscribe to our channel as it really helps other people find our videos. If you would like to help support this channel then please click the Patreon link to find out about our crowdfunding campaign. Thanks for watching.